Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing well and welcome to another reading vlog. I feel like every time I start a reading vlog, I'm wearing this jumper, but this jumper is kind of on brand for the theme of this vlog. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this vlog yet because in my mind, I'm like, yeah, the theme the theme checks out. I'm not sure I'm going to put that into words. So, you know, let me know how I did. In this vlog, I want to read books that make me feel like I'm on holiday slash have some sort of like a holiday vibe to them. I'm very much manifesting summer at the minute. The sun is shining, but it's still really cold and I just want to feel totally escapist. Read books set somewhere that is not cold and rainy England and also I just had a couple of books that I really wanted to read this month and I realized they were on like a similar theme so that is what we're doing we're reading books with holiday vibes books to make you feel like you're on holiday we're gonna have a little staycation in my own home reading books about holidays or holiday destinations so let's talk about the books I'm gonna be reading in this vlog I'm actually starting this vlog on a Tuesday crazy times rather than a Thursday because a couple of these books are kind of chunky and I don't think I'd be able to read them all over like a weekend. So the first book that I have is The Beach by Alex Garland. This is one of the books that inspired this because I spoke about it in my YouTube's What I Read in April and everyone just hyped me up for this book so much saying that I need to read it and that everyone loves it and yeah I'm really excited about it. So this is a kind of, I'm not going to say it's like a literary thriller but it is quite like dark I think. It's about a guy who is traveling in Thailand and ends up finding this secluded beach and it's like a utopia or is it dark things happen I think apparently very suspenseful obviously don't even need to explain why this is holiday vibes for starters it's called the beach for seconds it's about a guy on holiday traveling around Thailand and finding a secluded destination and you know is it a paradise or is it not I'm super excited to read this I honestly don't really know what to expect from it but I can't wait so yeah this is book number one number two is here comes the sun by Nicole Dennis Benn also spoke about this in you choose my April TBR and I think this one won I got so many comments on that video I actually couldn't quite work out without like sitting and counting them all which book won but I'm basically reading all of the books I spoke about in that video this month anyway so there's that to look forward to but this is set in Jamaica and it follows a group of women potentially sex workers and in particular two sisters so an older sister who is working as a sex worker to be able to kind of financially support her younger sister and give her a better life. This is set in Jamaica, so it's a very holiday destination, but what really interests me about this book, and I spoke about that in my video, is that it's kind of interrogating this idea of Jamaica as a beautiful holiday destination and then the kind of reality for people who actually live there so I think there might be some good stuff about tourism in Jamaica compared to people who actually live in Jamaica it's got little palm trees on the back and yeah again so excited to read this one and then finally this one hasn't actually arrived yet but we are manifesting summer and we are manifesting this book arriving tomorrow I think it is meant to come in the next couple of days but it is outlined by Rachel Cusk so I've never read any Rachel Cusk but CJ and Jay have both been absolutely raving about her recently and it's really made me want to pick her up. Outline is the first in a trilogy and it's set in Greece where a woman goes for summer to teach a creative writing course. It doesn't have a summary of a name as the other two, you know, the beach, here comes the sun, outline. There is a beach and a conch shell on the front of it and also it's set in Greece over summer. Greece is one of my favourite places to go on holiday. I absolutely love books set in Greece. I don't know why, there's just something about it I'm obsessed with. I think this is quite um, experimental in style, very literary. I think it's written from what I know about it, maybe in like overheard snippets of conversation. So it could be a style that really works for me. It could be a style that doesn't, but I'm excited to give her a try because if I do really like Cusk's style, then she's got a lot of books for me to dive into. So they are the three books we'll be reading this week. I'm really excited about this vlog and I hope you are too. Settle in and enjoy. I've got these like fake French braids in my hair today. I pulled this bit out and it's gone a bit weird, but I like absolutely can't French braid my hair. And on TikTok, obviously where I get all my information from, there was a tutorial on how to like make it look like it's French braided by just twisting two pieces of hair. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the vibe today. It is, as I say, Tuesday, it's lunchtime and I'm gonna make some lunch, um, do a little few bits and then pick up the first book, which I think is gonna be Here Comes the Sun. Hi, I just got a cheeky little ASOS delivery um, and I thought I'd show you, why not? This is my channel, I can do what I want. And you know, a couple of these pieces are quite summery, preparing for summer, so I'll just shoehorn that in there. Um, yeah, I've been so good not online shopping. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in a video before, I used to have like low-key online shopping addiction and I stopped for like two years just getting like the occasional thing I really needed. 
but as I mentioned in a vlog, I'd saved up some money to just get like a few nice things for summer. So fingers crossed for me that these are nice. Okay, so I got some dungarees. If you watched um, my mood reading vlog, you'll know that I have a pair of dungarees that I love, but they're like so uncomfortable and they're too short for me because I'm a five foot nine gal and things are always too short for me. Um, but I love wearing them and then I just wasn't wearing them because they weren't comfortable. So I was like, right, let's try and buy some tall dungarees. So these are they. Just like a black denim dungaree. Um, I might try them, I might try this stuff on, but yeah, that's number one. Speaking of dungas, I like love these and I just don't know if I'll be able to pull them off, but I got some, oh, these look quite big. I got some like shorts dungarees in this like cream color that I just thought for summer with like little tops underneath would just be like the cutest thing, but it does look quite big. It said this would be my size, but we will see, we'll try it on. And then finally, this isn't particularly summery. In fact, the material feels quite wintry, but it's just this little, um, might be, a, is it a dress? It might be a play suit. This little like checky, I mean, it, it's quite light. I could definitely wear it for summer. Um, this looks quite big as well, but should I do a try on? Maybe, if they all look hideous, you won't see me, but let's give it a go. Okay, these are my, these are the dungarees. This isn't very well lit. And I'm not sure, they have a really baggy leg. Good sized pocket, they are nice and long. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so these are like way too big. I don't know what ASOS was thinking. Um, but even if they were, they fit me properly, would I like them? I do like the vibe, but unfortunately I think it's another no. Okay, this feels so nice and soft, but I also think it might be a little bit big, but then again, it's like the perfect length. Is it too big? I'm really starting to despise this hair. I don't know. Okay, so our fashion haul was a fail, but we can get this day back on track. Got some avo, medium bold eggs that are a little bit too hard, some toast, some chili flakes, and let's read some Here Comes the Sun. Hello, so I read the first 100 pages of Here Comes the Sun on my lunchtime and really enjoying it so far. It's giving me like Love After Love by Ingrid Perso vibes, which is an all time favorite book of mine. Not just because it's set in the Caribbean, that's set in Trinidad. This is set, as I mentioned, in Jamaica, but it's very much like a family story looking at three women in this family. So you've got Laura's, who is the mother, and then Margot, who is an, the older daughter, who works in a hotel um, and is a sex worker on the side so that she can give money to Tandy, who's the younger daughter, who is very book smart and therefore at a really good school. And so the mum who works on a market stall and Margot are kind of putting all their hopes on Tandy getting an education. And so we see it from each of their perspectives. There are some very strange relationships between these sisters, mothers and daughters. There's like a 15 year age gap between Margot and Tandy and we get all of their perspectives. I think one of the reasons it's making me feel like love after love is because without any spoilers, there's like a lesbian character um, who is kind of struggling with that being being Jamaican and living in a country where that is illegal and extremely stigmatized, um, which is something that comes up in love after love with a gay character. But that aside, I yeah, I'm just loving it. I'm loving the family dynamics. There's a lot about kind of colorism in Jamaica and the kind of social class that relates to that what all these women really want out of their lives and the ways that they are struggling to get it. So Tandy is like this smart young girl who wants to go to school, but she's not really that bothered about going to school, but that she has all this pressure on her. And yeah, I think there's some really awful stuff that's happened in the past that, are, that is kind of creating these tensions between the women. But yeah, I'm really, really gripped um, and it's written really beautifully. There's a lot of like patois in it. And yeah, I just can't wait to keep reading more of it, um, which I will do later on. This week literally feels like the longest week ever and it is Tuesday, but I'm gonna do my favorite thing now, which is go and sit in the yard with my sister. That always cheers me up. I actually, in my vlog, like the Easter vlog where, where you briefly saw my sister, I'd actually thought I'd filmed a clip of her talking about what she's been reading recently. And I was a few sheets to the wind and didn't press record. So I might actually re get her thoughts on what she's been reading recently. Um, but yeah, gonna have a nice night with her very much, very much looking forward to it. 
Hi guys, good morning. Um, I had a nice night last night. My sister did not want to be filmed without a uh, warning. Weird, weird that some people are, you know, not egomaniacs who post themselves on the internet. Um, I haven't even really read that much more of Here Comes the Sun. I just wanted to film me taking these braids out on camera um, because my hair was like just dry when I did them yesterday. I didn't wash my hair this morning because I'm gonna go for a run. And so I thought it would be amusing to see what what these braids have done. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, so it's Wednesday today. Going to go for a run this morning. And I've got to go to work. It, it looks a little bit, um, what's the word? Like I look a little bit like a horse or something. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna go to work, but then, oh no, should not have done that. <laughs> gonna read more of Here Comes the Sun on my lunch. Have a good day. Hello, so I went on my run, um, it was horrible, and I'm wearing my post-run fit, which is the best thing that I own. I love it. Now I'm just having some lunch. Got some pesto pasta, got a Diet Coke, and we're gonna read some more of Here Comes the Sun. I've been looking forward to picking up this book all day. So yeah, let's do that. Hello, so look what arrived. Outline by Rachel Cusk. I love this cover. Like I really, sorry, I'm a bit overexposed. I really love the Cusk covers. Like just so simple, but so effective. Excited about that. Um, also on my lunch, I got to the end of part two of Here Comes the Sun, which is page 220 something, and it's like 340 pages. And I'm still just really, really enjoying this book. I don't know, it looks big. I guess 340 pages isn't like super long or anything, but the writing's quite small. And so it does just feel like there is a lot of stuff in this book. Like, as I mentioned, there's the three main characters of like Dolores, Margot and Tandy. But then you also get another woman who lives in the area. You sometimes get the perspective of other characters and yeah we're just like following a lot of people and a lot is kind of happening so i'd say the first part was definitely a lot of like setting up these familial relationships between the three women and and as i mentioned kind of looking at the ways it's strained and the ways they're all kind of struggling individually and then at the end of part one it kind of introduces i don't want to give any spoilers but like the aspect of as i've mentioned margot is a sex worker but kind of the way that she becomes involved in like a larger group of women who are operating as sex workers. And I thought the way that was introduced and what the novel's like looking at within that is really, really interesting, kind of took me by surprise. A few things actually have kind of, they're not like twists, but it's very well paced and very well plotted. So there have been little moments where I'm like, oh God, didn't see that coming. So all the exploration around sex work is really interesting. All of the stuff around sexuality and and being specifically a lesbian in Jamaica, social, um, cultural feelings about it that are really interesting. And the idea that like sex work is kind of something that a lot of people just accept is happening. Um, and because it's so tied up in like finances is just something that happens. Whereas being a lesbian, for example, is seen as like extremely subversive and ungodly. So I think that's all really well done. It's a pretty dark book. No one is very happy really. Everyone is kind of struggling with something and there's some really awful bits um, that again kind of come as a bit of a shock that I guess in part way explain the reason for the tensions that exist in this family and it's a lot about the kind of hotel industry in Jamaica and the idea of you know big resorts just displacing people forcing them out of their land to build hotels so yeah just thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it it's really I'd say it's like good story good writing I'm very interested to see where it goes at the end also a little bit scared because I think it might be a bit sad I have now just finished work but I'm doing like a work event tonight so I have to come back on in like an hour and a half probably so yeah I'm gonna keep on reading this, I think, until I have to do my work event. Okay, so I haven't finished Here Comes the Sun yet, but breaking news, just been announced that Hanya Anagahara has a new book out January 2022. So as the founding member of the Hanya Fanagahara Society. I'm very excited. It sounds like quite ambitious. It's partly set in the 1800s, partly set in the 1990s, partly set in like 2093. Um, and I'm actually like terrified of books set in the future, but in Hanya we trust. Uh, very, very excited about that. A new mosh fag was announced this week as well. It's all popping off with my favourite authors. I am pleased. Good morning. Happy 
Thursday. It's a Thursday and it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. Speaking of the sun, I really enjoyed this book. I'm giving it four stars, but I definitely think that it's maybe not what I expected. Just in terms of like the cover, here comes the sun. It's giving me like quite uplifting vibes. This book is not uplifting. Um, I think this book is super well written. It's quite like plotty and the writing is quite detailed. It's quite heavy in terms of like just the plot and the writing that you're getting, but also in terms of the content. Um, this book is very bleak. Um, it is very sad. It's a book that looks at relationships between women and, you know, intergenerational family, women in society in a way that I'm sure is very realistic, but it doesn't really offer much hope. Um, I think with books like this, you can get really heavy books that offer some hope. So I'm thinking like this kind of gave me America is not the heart vibes, but that had a little, just little threads of like potential happiness. There's maybe like one thread of potential happiness in this, but on the whole, it is pretty dark it is really looking at like the ways that women are subjugated in this society um the role of sex work in jamaica's wider kind of political corruption or the way it plays into like the colorism of the place the deprivation of a lot of people the unjust kind of society and within the family dynamics you really see how these mothers and sisters and daughters really like hurt and damage each other and the ways that their love for each other is at times misguided, at times kind of absent, um, but even when there is kind of love or at least like the attempt to protect or to better their lives, it doesn't always work. You know, you can try to give someone a better life or to make decisions that are hard because you think it's for the best and, and really showing how, how wrong those decisions can be. So I think it's a really, really smart book. It's definitely like a page turner. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it, but I would caveat it by saying like, it's pretty heavy. I'm gonna start on outline today on my lunch, I think, and I actually am really looking forward to just the change of pace. Like, not that I didn't enjoy that, but as I say, that was a lot of writing, a lot of plot. And from what I've heard about outline, it's kind of pretty out there, nothing happens, um, very like abstract writing style. So I think it'll be fun to, to switch it up. So yeah, that is today's plan. I did say we were manifesting sun and here it comes. I have my hair in this pineapple because I don't want my scalp to burn. Um, it's only like 10 degrees, but because it's so sunny and there's like no clouds, it's actually like super warm. So I've been reading Outline and I'm halfway through it and I'm really enjoying it actually. Um, I was chatting to the hotties and Hannah was like, I don't think you'll like it. I think you might think it's too pretentious. And there's definitely some pretension in it, um, but I feel like my tastes are very varied. Sometimes I want plot and I want like character depth um and other times i like reading something that's like really really abstract and this is what i was in the mood for i also think reading it like in the sun whilst reading about athens which is so hot i find the style quite like soporific um so i've just been really enjoying reading it so we're following this unnamed narrator who uh goes to athens for a few days to teach a creative writing course and the novel is made up of 10 conversations is what it says on the back. So basically it's just her meeting people and having like extended conversations with them, mostly from their side. Um, and these conversations are like very ideological. And so if you don't like books where nothing happens, and if you don't like books that are that little bit pretentious, that are very ideas based, definitely steer clear of this one, but I'm enjoying it. I like minutiae kind of daily life and I like when she meets someone and getting just like to hear about their life and um, so the first person she meets is a man on the plane who's Greek but lived in England for a lot of his life um, and I found it really interesting him kind of reflecting on his three marriages Car. the next person was a fellow writer on the course who was talking a lot about um, kind of positioning himself as a writer as an Irish writer um, and all of that I just I just found really really fascinating. Some of it is very cerebral shall we say my new favorite word um, The word illusory Illusio, I can't even pronounce it like illusions are talked about a lot and sometimes it does go like a little bit more abstract a little bit less like tangible which potentially I enjoy slightly less, but I think it's a really insightful 
book um a lot of the things that have kind of just come up not even like the big ideas they're talking about but just like little observations i guess about the way we frame our lives the way we think about things at the minute this section i'm in she's in a restaurant with an old friend and then this other writer who he's friends with and it's a lot about like parenthood um and childhood and thinking about like the way we think about our children's lives, the way we like reflect on our childhoods and working against that in our life. And yeah, I'm just finding it really interesting. The main character is quite pretentious. Like she's very detached and aloof. You don't really get much from her. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So we'll keep on reading this, this later, I think. But now I've got to go back to work. Hello, so I'm still at work, slaving away at that grind in this office that I've still done. Literally nothing too, but just wanted to show you something cute. I was a bit sad the other day, I'd had some bad news. It just, sorry, spat everywhere. It wasn't anything major, but I was sad. And my mum sent me a book. She sent me Standard Deviation by Catherine Heine. So Catherine Heine is the author of Early Morning Riser, which I read last month and absolutely loved. It was so uplifting. And now she's read it and she loved it as well. And this is her first book. Um, and how beautiful is that? Oh, I love how I got a new chair because the other one was squeaking. And the cover's shiny, which I hate, but that's extremely ungrateful. I would never think such a thing. I'm not really sure what it's about, but apparently also very funny and heartwarming like early morning rise. So isn't that so cute? Three cheers for my mum. Love you, mum. Also, super quick question. Alex is out socialising tonight. So I'm gonna be home alone and I have like a Zoom party and I got paid today. Do I order myself my favourite takeaway from a restaurant that's just recently reopened? Like I think we all know the answer. Okay, so obviously I ordered the food and it has arrived. I'm really excited. I changed out of my green jumper just while I'm eating because we all know what happened last time and I just don't need to deal with that debacle again. Um, the sheer amount of prawn crackers that I've received really makes me think that they think this is an order for two people, which more fuel them. So this is my favourite restaurant. It's actually in the village, but that one's still not open, but they, ordered a, they opened a new one in like a neighbouring town. So this is where I've ordered this from. It's like a pan-Asian restaurant. I've probably talked about it before. And yeah, my best friend's dad designed the menu. He's a genius. Um, he's from Hong Kong and he makes some good, good Chinese and Thai food. So I have just some egg fried rice. I have crispy Szechuan beef, um, which I do believe is the best crispy Szechuan beef you can probably get outside of Szechuan. And then piece of resistance. I've got some, I think this is, I usually get war tip and they were unavailable. So I can't remember what this is, but basically like prawn dumplings. Um, and dumplings are like my favorite thing. Should I do a taste test? Mm. I'm not gonna lie, obviously I love Alex, but when you have those occasional like nights to yourself, you know, it's pretty damn good. So I'm gonna see how much of this food I can eat. And I've got April's favorite books ever video queued up, which I'm super excited to watch because I love April and I love her taste in books, so let's do that. Okay, so food eaten. I have actually been reading more of Outline as well, but I don't have that long left until I finish, so I think I'll just speak to you again about it properly when I'm finished it. But the reason I don't have time to talk about it now is because one of my best friends from work is leaving, which is super sad, but we're having like a Zoom leaving party for her tonight. And I have made the quiz, obviously. I am the resident quiz master. I take it very seriously. I love participating in quizzes, don't get me wrong. I also just love making quizzes. Not gonna lie, email, rude. I've done a picture round, I've done general knowledge round. The picture round, isn't that exciting? Obviously did it as a PowerPoint. So yeah, gonna do that now. Uh, probably go on for a few hours. Excited about it. This was my full quiz setup last night. Like actually used the ring light for the first time in my life. And I've never used it for booktube, so that gives you an idea of how seriously I take quizzing. Good morning, happy Friday. It's a very exciting day, not least because it's a Friday, but also because I'm getting my nails done today. Got an appointment this afternoon. I literally can't wait. Getting gel nails is like my favorite thing in the world, not gonna lie. Um, and finally, I think I last got them done in December and we've been rocking a bare nail for a couple of months now. And they're really short and sad, but really excited, have no idea what colour I'm gonna get. And my like amazing nail tech has just moved to like a really cool new um, like studio, which I've never seen before. So yeah, that's just gonna be very exciting and going into town to get it done. So gonna go to a bookshop. I mean, what a day, what a day. I finished reading Outline last night by Rachel Cusk and I absolutely 
loved this book. Part of me like really thought I was gonna love it and part of me was kind of like put off by what people were saying and that you know I might not like it but I loved it. I really really did. It's not a five star because I do think there were still parts of it that I liked less or parts of it that were a bit too like big brain energy or that I didn't like connect with as much but on the whole I absolutely loved it. It was just such a pleasure to kind of like sink into this really slow moving, nothing's happening, really like thoughtful writing. I think like the perfect time to read this would be like on a holiday or just some some time where you can really like take a minute and just enjoy it. Like yesterday when I was outside, sun was shining, reading this was beaut. And so yeah, it's as I say, made up of these 10 conversations and I did prefer some of the conversations to the others. I really enjoyed some of the earlier ones and then I really, really enjoyed kind of the last few. So there's one where she's at a restaurant with two women and they're kind of talking about relationships and some from the writing classes uh, at the end where they're kind of all talking that I just absolutely loved. And there is a kind of like slight recurring theme, like as I say, nothing happens, but there's this one man who she has like multiple conversations with and there's a scene when they're on a boat, which I found like very well done, kind of felt like dark a little bit as it went through. It did have these like moments of darkness, like nothing massively overt, but just these little like uneasy moments I really appreciated. There's also some like very dry humor in it. Like again, super, super subtle, but I just really appreciated the way that that all came together. Um, and yeah, I'll definitely be reading the next two in the trilogy. Super different book to Here Comes the Sun, um, 100%. That was like very plot heavy, very like emotionally wrought. This was very detached, quite like passive. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I think I'm gonna give it definitely a four, maybe even a 4.5. That's exciting. Yeah, loved it, success. Kind of matches my outfit today as well. Gonna do some work, finishing at half 12, exciting. And so I might pick up the beach like before I have to leave to go into town, but then I'll definitely take it with me like on my travels. So that is the plan for Friday. Finished work, woohoo. Gonna eat my leftovers from last night. Leftovers, I mean, it's about three grains of rice. Um, and I'm gonna start reading The Beach, our final book, um, also the longest book. Kind of terrified about how long this vlog's gonna be because um, I think it's already like half an hour and we still have 400 pages to read. But, you know, we're out here, we're living our lives, we're having fun. This is a safe space for me to ramble on as much as I want. So I'm sure you'll all be accepting of that. Let's start the beach. Hello, I am off. I am on my way to town. I feel like I've just missed a metro, which is gonna really annoy me. Um, I'm also gonna cross the road. 150 pages into the beach. I'm reading it quite quickly because it's just so gripping. Like it's everything that I wanted in terms of just dark, dark vibes. Am I out focus? Probably. We're following this young guy called Richard who's from the UK and he's very like a seasoned young traveler, he's done all of Asia. And when he's in Bangkok, this guy who's next to him in a hotel room um, kills himself and then gives, well, before he does, gives Richard a map to this like secluded Thai island that's meant to be like a paradise. And so he's like really disturbed by it, obviously and has no idea if this place is real. It's like a beach on an island where tourists aren't allowed to travel. And then he decides with this French couple who he meets that they're gonna go and try and find the beach, this island. And so I don't wanna say any more for spoilers, but they do find it obviously. And he's kind of just arrived there now. And yeah, it just seems like it's gonna get really, really dark. It already feels very unnerving. So loving that, gonna keep reading it later on. My nails are done. They're short, but they're cute. Went for just like a classic orange red, you know, can't go wrong. Feels bright, feels peppy, feels springy. And now, oh, how a breath. Um, hair's looking very Lord Farquhar. And now I am 
off to meet my parents at the pub. Yay for Fridays. Hello, so I'm home now, got my hat hair. That was lovely to see my parents in our little local pub, but I am freezing cold. Shout out to mum for bringing gloves because she knew that I wouldn't bring any. So yeah, nails are did. They're super short, but I love them. And because I talk with my hands so much now, I'm gonna be doing that even more. I went to Waterstones, as you may have seen, and I bought four books, but I can't show you three of them yet because they will be featured in a very special vlog that will be coming next week. But I can show you one that I bought, which is Three Act Tragedy by Agatha Christie. I bought the next book that I need for my Poirot project um, that I'm gonna read this month. So that was nice. I love having all my like matching spines. It's just a delight, you know? I also read some more of The Beach and I'm now just under 200 pages through. And yeah, I'm really liking it. I'll talk a little bit about it because I feel like before I was just walking towards, I was like walking through the wind, it was blurry, whatever. Cheers. So yeah, really loving this book. Now that he's like at the beach, um, like I said, I don't wanna really give any spoilers because I think this book's probably better if you don't know anything, but we're kind of learning about like the environment of the beach, what it's like there how they're kind of living there and I find all that really interesting. I weirdly think I love like, not exactly a survival story, but I think because in any situation I love when like a group of people are thrown together in like strange circumstances or when there's not much outside influence, it's a bit of like locked room, which is very much what this is. And yeah, having that little added extra of it being this totally wild, um, completely away from everything else. I just think I love stories like that. It's a bit like Lord of the Flies, um, but not at all. And yeah, there's definitely like some darkness to it. Very suspenseful. I feel like it's quite foreboding. We get a lot from Richard's like perspective and his sort of like dreams and nightmares that he's having, particularly around this man who he found who had committed suicide. And yeah, I think although it's very gripping, very pacey, I'm reading very quickly, there's a lot of plot. It is actually still quite literary um, and I like that it's so long because I'm really getting like immersed in this place and finding it very like captivating to read. So yeah, it's about nine o'clock. Alex is still out because he played golf this afternoon and then was drinking at the golf club with his friends outside. So I am going to keep reading my book. Good morning. I ended up reading so much of this book last night because it is so good. I'm up to page 350 so I have like 75 pages left and yeah. I'm just loving it. It's so, so gripping. It's doing that thing, which is one of my favorite tropes in literature where it's all about like the descent of a person and things getting like slowly darker, people being put in like more and more stressful situations and things just like very slowly turning for the worse. Um, I'm sure this is gonna have like quite an explosive ending or at least I hope so, quite a dark ending. I can totally see why this was turned into a film and I'll definitely be watching it after I've finished reading it. I am gonna try and get it finished this morning. My friends are coming because they wanna swim in the sea. My friend who's leaving work and my other friend who I used to work with, they're gonna come swim in the sea. I will not be joining them. And um, then we're gonna get fish and chips, which will be really nice. But yeah, I'm gonna try and read some of this this morning and get it finished because I'm very well aware of how long this vlog is. Hello, I'm at the beach. Um, just by myself because my friends are in the sea, bless them. I mean brave. It's like quite, it's like 10 degrees or something. But I did bring my book, so very on brand to read the beach on the beach, you know? There they are, my little swimmers. Hi guys, guess who finished reading The Beach at the weekend and then forgot to end the vlog? Straight up forgot to end the vlog, it's a Tuesday. I finished reading The Beach and I absolutely loved it. We have a five star read. I'm so happy, honestly. The five star fictions haven't really been coming thick and fast this year. I think I've maybe read like six. Um, but this was Chef Kiss. Exactly what I wanted, just the absolute like slow burn into like such darkness. I absolutely loved the ending. I loved the character development. I loved like how weird and dark it got. I'm not gonna give any spoilers, um, but I think it's fine to know that if that's the kind of thing you like to read. And it was just one of those books that I feel like I don't get that often. I think I read them more like 
in the past where they're like kind of chunky books with a lot of plot but the characters done so well and like the writing is solid enough and the setting that I just feel like super immersed feel like I've been on like a proper journey with these characters and with this story like I'm thinking of when I read like the secret history for the first time like that kind of thing where I just feel so immersed in the world um and you know I I say this quite a lot like sometimes I want plot sometimes I don't this just did plot perfectly for me but there was enough elements of like non-straightforwardness shall we say to just make it a perfect check it five star read and I can't wait to watch the film I also think Alex would really like this book so I'm going to try and make him read it it probably won't work and then we can watch the film together but yeah what a success to be fair this whole vlog was a success two four stars and a five star I mean I'll take it I'll definitely take it and yeah I feel like I've gone on holiday I mean would not have wanted to go on this holiday I'll say that but yeah I had such a fun time doing this really random vlog I really hope that you enjoyed watching it please do let me know down below what you think of these books I know a lot of people are interested to hear my thoughts on here comes the sun and the beach and I'd be interested to see like what side of the fence people come down on with cusk but yeah I've had such a good time thank you as always obviously I would love if you subscribed to my Instagram and my story graph I'll link down below and I will see you in my next one bye